Falls. Once again, on the groove. Coming, coming, coming to you straight out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And brought to you by the Sioux Empire Podcast Network. This is. This is. Urban Indians Podcast. Bringing you an educated and entertaining look at life through the eyes of the modern day Native American. Urban Indians Podcast. Hosted by everyone's favorite natives Night Shield, Night Shizzle, Miss Shark Green Maximo, Shark Green Maximo, GP, Gorilla Pimp, and Kathy Stan. Kathy Stan. You're listening to Urban Indians Podcast. Episode 23 of the Urban Indians Podcast uh, Mother's Day. Welcome to episode 23 of the Urban Indians Podcast. I'm your host, Gabriel Nightshield. Today, joined by all my friends, my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a very special Mother's Day episode, as uh, it's just Robert and I today, hanging out. Woo! Yeah, so it's going to be an exciting episode. Um, Thrilling. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. So, shout out to everybody that's watching. I know Levi said he was going to be watching. Shar and Kathy, unfortunately, weren't unable to make it as well. So, it's just me and Robert hanging out. We're going to get nerdy here, I think. Hi, Levi. <laughs> so, I know, first up, I've been wanting to talk about Infinity War forever. Um, have you seen Infinity War yet, Robert? Oh, yes. All right, good. Without these girls here, we can uh, we can really get into some... Infinity War Nerd stuff. territory. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I myself have seen Infinity War four times. It's, uh, this is the first weekend since it's been out that I haven't gone to see it. Um, and you never know, the night's still young. I might have to go check it out before the day is over. What, uh, what was your initial thoughts on it? Uh, pretty blown away. Yeah. That was, uh, that was wild <clears throat> stuff. Sorry, my brain is like trying to jog real quick to remind myself <laughs> of what happened. But uh, yeah, so spoiler alert, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. Full spoilers. Let's see. Holy shit, I couldn't believe who they killed. I, yeah. I kind of thought they were going to let Thanos win or let it get dark. Yeah. I didn't quite realize they were going to go all the way with that he's actually going to get <laughs> to fucking wipe out half the life in the universe. But uh and then they killed like all of the like people that I didn't think they because I thought they'd get rid of yeah. the old people and the new guys would save the day. Yeah. And then that's <clears throat> like the setup for phase three or whatever it is. Yeah. And instead we got uh they killed off all the people who have still have contracts with Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole like, that, that ain't right, especially <laughs> like Black Panther and Spider Man. I'm just like, oh, you're you most recently highest grossing guys, huh? Yeah, okay. man. Old choice. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man was a tough one. That was like, um, did you hear they improvised that scene too? Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah, that was brutal. Like, um, yeah, that was definitely. I, I think that was like the most heartfelt moment of the of the movie. Um, I was actually I was in Albuquerque when I seen it, so uh -huh. I wasn't with the usual like nerd crew that goes to like all the midnight showings at uh, or early showings here in Sioux Falls. So it was kind of a different crowd. It was like an IMAX, which I'd never been to before, which was pretty awesome. But that's sweet. Yeah, yeah that'd it, be a good movie to see in IMAX. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome. Um, and everybody, it was it was fun to go see down there too, just because like um, 
it was, I don't know, I like being around a bunch of different nerds or whatever, but um, whenever, whenever Tony got stabbed, it's like, oh no, like the whole movie, like... Well, I was waiting for it, because yeah. the trailer really teases you that, like, that's the moment he's got because they even kind of show it in the trailer where he's like, looking defeated and yeah. all that, and yeah. That was, the whole movie theater gasped, everybody was like, oh no, and it was just dead quiet in there, like everybody, I, I thought... That was the end of Tony right there. I have a lot of nerd friends who were super mad that uh, Steve Rogers did not have a bigger part in this one. He's my favorite character in the MCU, is Captain America. And the whole time I was like, it, for the last year I've been like building up like Cap's going to die in this movie. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard on me. I'm going to take it yeah. rough. Well, that's what I was doing with Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. I was like bracing myself for it. I was like, no, you can't take Robert. <laughs> yeah. yeah um and then especially the the the, the teaser with uh with cap holding off thanos or whatever he's holding yes it's like damn it that is where he's gonna die and it's yep. gonna suck and then i was the whole time i was preparing for captain america to die and spider-man dies it's the worst <laughs> so yeah they they got me hook line and sinker because yeah yeah i totally bought and yeah and uh uh, Doctor Strange getting taken out. Taken out. I didn't see that coming. Either. Yeah. Like I said, I it's like pretty much everyone I expected to die lived, and everyone I expected to live yeah. died. Other than I kind of knew Loki and uh, Idris Elba's character uh, Heimdall. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't ready for. He I didn't. Well, I mean, I guess I wasn't really like surprised, but I was surprised that Heimdall died. Yeah, like, Heimdall he's was like a, really a cool big character to. But uh, if. If Thor can get, you know, nerding out here, if Thor can get the Bifrost with the axe now, it's kind of like... Yeah, he doesn't really need... a redundant character. <laughs> yeah. But he was so badass. So. Yeah. Oh, well. He had I a good know. run. <clears throat> yeah. Is that, I feel like the reason all these characters died in this one, and, like, the main Avengers die have are still alive, is because in the next one, like, all... Like, I feel like in the comic, like, a lot... Of, there's in the Soul Stone, like, the characters are exist in the soul stone that got yep. like wiped out and that's my theory is what they're doing yeah and so like they'll have all the final like the original avengers go out you know and you know save the day but they'll like end up having to sacrifice their lives or something like that and that's kind of what i'm wondering is you're going to get like a flipped script where it's going to be the end of part two is going to be all the new people are back but the old people are are gone yeah yeah it's going to be a I can't believe they brought back red skull just for that little bit part as like the guard yeah. of the stone or whatever and then they didn't bring back hugo weaving for it although it tricked me because the the voice was good enough that in the theater i thought yeah. it was hugo weaving that was probably the biggest surprise to me in the whole movie was red skull yeah i was waiting for it to be lady death i was like i thought they weren't gonna do this <laughs> yeah which i'm pretty sure that's 90 percent of the design of that scene there yeah and it it does out. it does like tie up like because Whatever did happen to the Red Skull, like he just like beams up, and then that's it that's true. Never explained really, like what happened to him. It's like nine movies later. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it, I thought that was a cool callback, and especially like because a lot of that early um, MCU stuff doesn't really get like called back nowadays. Like some of the whatever. references inside the Hulk, because I didn't know this, but the Edward Norton Hulk movie uh, is still technically considered like Marvel canon. Yeah. What happened in that. But I never considered it that way because the only tie-in is the, the after scene with Tony Stark. Yeah. Well, General Ross is in that movie. And he's in Civil That's War. True. And then, That's true. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I... That movie is good. It's better than like a lot of the movies, but I feel like it gets like... Um, a bad rap. Yeah. Um, they have... Uh, like they, they don't... They need to bring Liv Tyler back at some point. Like, at least wrap that whole part up. Like, if, if you know, I don't know. I think she, because she never gets explained again, or even, like, mentioned ever again. Yeah. Well, it's kind of <clears> like, uh, there's a few characters that have dropped off like that, and it tends to be the romantic interests for yeah. this part or that part. Like, uh, who is it, uh, the actress that Thor is with? Oh, Natalie Portman? Yeah, Natalie Portman. You don't. You know, they just had to like, oh, we broke up. I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. So saved on the casting budget. <laughs> yeah. I think that was more her doing, because I don't think she liked being in those movies. Okay. But then I read something the other day where um, she said she was open to returning. I'm just like, 
now that it's a multi-billion, billion, billion dollar franchise, I'm open to return the Yeah, yeah, return. I'm sure that's what it was. It's like, kind of like, uh, <laughs> is that, not Forrest Whitaker, uh, it's the name of the actor who played, uh, War Machine, and then... Oh, Don, re- oh, um, Tar- yeah. Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard got replaced by Don Cheadle. Yeah. Like, I want more money! Let's get that people. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> I just like that. And that was early on too. I felt like that was a very ruthless choice. Like, just so you all fucking know, you are all expendable, no matter how much they love you. <laughs> yeah. 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 How much is he kicking himself now? Like he oh. just fucking. Man. Yeah. That would be. That would be tough. That would be tough. To be like, man, if I hadn't just been, if I'd have just been, a little, little less greedy. <laughs> yeah. It'd be. All good. I don't know. Yeah, now Don Cheadle's fucking in, like, the, what, Iron Man 3. Well, yeah, he's in, like, all the biggest movies, like, in history just about now. Yeah. That could have been Don Cheadle. It's right out of the War Machine, which that's a fucking cool part to be. Yeah. So, but, yeah. um, So, really curious to see where they go. I think they will use the Soul Stone to do a, like, reboot or pull people back in. I've heard some speculation uh, that it's actually going to be a time travel thing. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. And then what role does uh, Captain Marvel play in all of this with the whole... Yeah. I like the memes where it's like with that little space pager. uh, Yeah. Instead of it calling uh, Captain Marvel, it's calling Deadpool. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He can fix this. Yeah. (laughs) Third wall powers activate. Yeah. (laughs) like travels back in time and kills the writer <laughs> yeah right i wonder like because yeah like i've heard like it casting in like the in for avengers 4 like they have an older version like a teenage version of ant-man's daughter in it so like um and i was reading this thing the other day about where because they could use the time stone to be like to be like really at any point in time in the future yeah and come back and fix what's happened and i that had never really occurred to me so like we could go say like avengers 4 happens and it's like 10 years later you know they're all gone how the fuck is tony gonna get back to earth like all this other shit and then like somehow they come up on the the time gem and that's how that's where we start at Um, because didn't like gwyneth paltrow spoiled a bunch of shit too this week saying that like they have a kid um (laughs) I like Levi's theories that he's uh, putting out here. He says they're going to uh, get the dragon balls and wish everyone back. <laughs> and then his other theory is that uh, they'll summon Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool if they did summon Captain Planet. <laughs> and hey, they've got uh, they got Don Cheadle. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> they're going to get that Captain Planet. Yeah. He's going to team up with Thanos and turn half the universe <laughs> to trees. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I yeah, because I've I've seen it four times. That's more than any time Holy I've shit. ever seen a fucking movie in the theater. But it's just so badass. It's just like every the most boring parts I think are um, with Thor and uh, with the Guardians basically. Um, but who was you know who was badass too was Ebony Maw and they kill him. Yeah, like I thought he was like the best new character out of all of them, and then he gets killed like first, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What you gonna do? So I'm curious, like, where they're gonna go from here. Because I understand that they'll use this as, like, a reset, and then they'll set up a new thing. I'm kind of curious what the next big arc will be after they're, they've moved past, like, the Infinity War yeah. and stuff. Because it'll be hard. I try to think of something in Marvel that, like, just brings everybody together. What I'd really like to do is at some point, like, at the end of 4 they like do a dimension crossover thing and that's how now that disney has them can like yeah. like the x-men and stuff like that would be <clears> pretty <throat> awesome yeah it'll be interesting to see because the fantastic four they could bring in fairly easily i think but it would be interesting to see how they introduce mutants into this world now like how did they you know they just n- didn't exist well, before and they happen to be here to, that's why it's like the infinity uh gauntlet is a great way to uh to MacGuffin your way through that. Yeah. It's like Patton Oswald. You've heard his like post oh, yeah. Infinity War. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he's just like, that's how that's how we're gonna get 
uh, Star Star Wars. So <laughs> Chewbacca with uh, with his severed head on a robot body <laughs> fighting Tony Stark. Yeah. That's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that would be badass. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And, yeah, and that's when the Blackbird from X Men swoops in. Yeah, well, maybe maybe like okay, so something happens with uh with the you know it, with the gauntlet and like there's I don't know how whenever everybody gets wiped out that introduces some sort of gene into the you know populace or whatever and then that's where mutants are born from or something like that yeah um <clears throat> or they're altering history uh changes it so that there are mutants in this like timeline yeah and a bunch of other stuff is like slightly tweaked yeah that would be yeah that would be cool it'll be weird to see once that eventually happens with you know who's there who they're gonna have play wolverine and like all that kind of stuff yeah that's a good question because you definitely have to bring back uh, a wolverine of some kind besides yeah hugh jackman it can't be hugh jack they'll no. they won't have hugh jackman like his, right because that would be too same confusing with patrick stewart as professor x it's like yeah after uh after logan why in god's name when you come back it's just like yeah it's like the joke in the Deadpool 2 trailer. It's like, you killed it. There's no way to improve from here. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Speaking of, I can't wait until, like, I don't know. It sounds like they might hold Deadpool off in his own, like, R-rated uh, Marvel Universe. And then that might be just where they stick a lot of the stuff that is more yeah. R-rated with, like, X-Force and stuff like that. I'd be Which cool I'm super with that. excited about that movie. Yeah. For some reason, I had thought that it was... My wife is out of town for the week, and I had thought this weekend was when Deadpool was coming out, and I was so pumped, because, like, she's not here. I'm going to go to the, like, early morning matinee, and yeah. it's Deadpool, and I'm just going to be... It's going to be so awesome, and uh, I said, no, that's next weekend. Damn it! <laughs> yeah. But on the bright side, uh, <clears throat> next weekend, I'm taking my mom to the drive-in theater in Miller, and they're doing uh, a, a feature with... Uh, Black Panther at in the drive-in, which oh yeah, on the gigantic screen that's always nice. a blast. I haven't been to the drive-through or drive-through drive-in here. Um, that would be kind of cool to go go to and check out. Yeah, Don't... I I like the one in Miller is like fifteen minutes away from where I grew up, and uh, they you know when they had that big cutoff where they ended up forcing everyone to go digital. The whole town got like got together and saved money like something out of it's a wonderful life where they were all throwing <laughs> yeah. money in a basket and stuff. Yeah. And they got the like million dollar digital projector so nice. they could keep open and like run like top of the line movies as they came out during the summer and like pretty much any Star Wars that comes out and a lot of the Marvel movies if I can I go check them out at uh, that drive-in theater because it's so much fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. I remember. Um when I used to live in in Boston, I remember uh, we used to go to the we used to go to like Cape Cod. My uncle owned a house in Cape Cod. <clears throat> we would go there and we would go. They had a driving theater uh, that we would go to, and so like a lot of my early memories are at this driving theater. I remember going to see Gremlins um, at the driving theater. I don't remember if it was Gremlins one or two, but I remember my brother had like ticks in his ear or something like that oh. <laughs> so my memory is like of my mom like with tweezers pulling like wood ticks out of my brother's oh. ear <laughs> oh, God. and he's like Damn. all crying and i was like shut the fuck up i'm trying to watch gremlins here but, <laughs> 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 but yeah it's one of my earliest <laughs> memories <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I hear they're going to be bad this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm not looking forward to. I remember I'd be out in the, the prairie fixing fence in the spring and stuff like that after the snow thaws, and it's just like completely destroyed all the fences down in the, the draws. And you just like, you drive the pickup five feet, you fix the fence there, yeah. pop back in the pickup, you pull like six ticks off your leg, uh, crush them with your pliers. Yeah. <laughs> you drive the pickup ten feet, you fix the fence, you get back in, you pull the six, oh, seven God. ticks off your leg. And it's just, yeah, it's gross. I couldn't, I couldn't do that anymore. The shit I did in my tw my twenties, work wise, <laughs> that I was like, that, you know, I think that's why they get young people to do those jobs because you're not. You're too stupid to be like, fuck you, why would I do this for $10 an hour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. I don't know. You see, uh, are you excited for Solo? Are you a Star Wars? You're a Star Wars oh, person, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I am pretty ambivalent about Solo, because I think I might be getting Star Wars fatigue, especially with the, not so much with the main line, but with the spin-offs. Yeah. Uh, but I did really enjoy uh, Rogue One. Yeah. But I, but I don't go out of my way to, like, watch. It's not going to be, like, a Christmas tradition like the other ones are where Amanda and I sit down and we binge the yeah. the, tri the trilogies. <clears throat> uh, but, uh, I don't know. I have more hope for it. It sounds like the buzz from it, it like, it's actually getting, like, good critical response. Yeah. They're retweaking. Because, basically, from what I understand, they had the two writers that, that set it up, or that created it, or, like, the director and one, one like, assistant writer, and then the main writer has stayed the same. But those guys basically wanted to make a Guardians of the Galaxy style, just like really wacky and yeah. over the top and stuff. And they sacked those guys like a couple of years ago. And now this was, is it? Uh, is that Lord Ron Howard? Lord Miller? You talking about? I, I'm not sure, but the um, <clears throat> but then they brought in Ron Howard to clean it. Up. Yeah. And so people are saying that it's a lot more like the like a New Hope. And yeah. In a good way with the. With like the 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 feel of like Han Solo is a is like a rogue, but the the universe actually has some weight and danger to it. And this is like the first Star Wars movie that's ever come out that I've ever just been like, eh, I don't really. I mean, I'll go watch, I'll go see it the day it comes out, but I'm not like super excited Ooh, to go watch you know, it or anything. You're not gonna be like in line at midnight. To yeah, like if 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 um, I've heard Boba Fett's in it, which um he's not, but. Yeah. That would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have been awesome if he was. Yeah. Um, I would have been way more excited if that was the case. However, there is a character in it. I won't spoil it. Um, but I've I get on Reddit and I read all the fucking spoilers. I'm just the worst yeah, when it I, comes I'm, to that. I'm a monster for that. Yeah. Like I, I knew like a <clears throat> third of the like surprises of Infinity Stone before I watched it. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. I, I, I read it, the whole story, like, that, like, Monday, and I was like, God damn it. it but it was still awesome when I watched it, but, like, yeah. I, I know there's a character from the prequels that's in um, Solo for, like, a second that makes me excited to go watch it. Nice. Um, that, but, yeah, he's only in it for a minute. It feels like they're setting him up for something, I guess, but... Yeah. Um, uh Looks like Levi says as long as Donald Glover kills it as Lando, it'll be down, or he'll be he'll be, he'll be down for Solo. From whatever the reviews are, um, <clears throat> like at, just whenever the initial reactions came out, everybody was saying that that Donald Glover was like the best part of the movie. So but that's believable. Yeah. What'd you think of that uh, that music video? That this it's, is America. It's good. I yeah. I like it a lot actually. I, like um, the song, not so much. But like the it's video, okay. yeah. But the video is super like gripping and dense, and it's like I think I watched it three times before I figured I got all the like little stuff going on in the background. I still don't really know what's going on in the background. <laughs> a lot of it, like, uh, it's like it wasn't the third. <clears throat> it wasn't until the third time I saw the everyone was talking about the guy that jumps to his death in the background. Oh, I didn't see and, that. Yeah, from one of the rafters or whatever, and there's huh. yeah, just a lot of stuff. But man, the first time I watched it, I. I did not see the gun thing coming. Yeah, the neither did I. In the guitar, it was just so like pop. I was like, Jesus Christ, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. Or with the the, you know, you kind of were ready for it now because you knew it was that kind of video. Yeah. But when he does it to the chorus, they do it so brutal. Yeah. It's fast that it's just like point and click. I was, um, <sighs> what was I? I was listening to the Breakfast Club or something like that. And Charlemagne the God was talking about. He wished that there it would have been like a, a white guy that did that instead of a, a black guy that like because that way it's all it's like you know the white people that are or like all those like ak you know killings and stuff like that murder sprees are all you know done by like white people or whatever and to see like more black on black crime uh, he said it sort of like undercut the emotion behind it to him anyway um yeah I and mean, i think Part of it, too, is, I mean, like I said, it's dense. I think there's a meta commentary going on with it where he's talking about not just, like, in real life, but the violence in media a little bit. And then, because uh, he's doing, when he's dancing there at the beginning and the pose he strikes when he, like, pulls the gun or whatever, yeah. there's an old, like, 
is the is a dance from like a minstrelsy show where a white guy would t- put on black face and dance like that. And you could see oh, the really? old like racist figurines of someone in that exact pose. Someone huh. would put up a meme because I'd forgotten about it, but put up a meme that was like, "Here's the figurine, and here's Donald Lover standing there with the gun." Yeah, and, that, and it's like, oh, huh. I missed that. Yeah, and yeah, so there's there's a lot to unpack there, and then like the ending when he's like running, it, it's yeah. like a wave of like police coming after him at the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really good video. It's it's a uh, It's complex. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched it probably like 3 or 4 times and I like I just like his dancing in it too. Like he I didn't know Donald Glover could could fucking dance like that either. Levi says that music video is amazing as fuck and it's like the Wiz meets American Gangster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. I that's a it's a accurate description. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Some nerd stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how excited are you for Deadpool? Mm, to me, if I'm being honest, I know you like Deadpool. To me, I do not like Deadpool. You don't like Deadpool? No. He, I mean, the, mo- the movie is great. Okay. The movie is good. Whenever I'm reading a comic and Deadpool shows up, it's just going to be a bunch of dumb shit. It's going to ruin the tone of the comic. Sure. And I'm not... Like I he's can see too, that if you're reading one with a serious storyline and Deadpool shows up and starts doing third wall stuff, it's like yeah, it's shit. just like if you're like if you're reading a Deadpool comic, you know what you're getting. But like if I'm reading like say I don't know whatever Daredevil and all of a sudden Deadpool shows up, I'm like oh, I already know this is gonna be a waste of you know because he's gonna take all the that. seriousness out of it and just make it silly. Yeah. Um, so uh, as a character, like in the comics, I'm I don't like Deadpool, okay. but the movie is good. Yeah, and that's what's funny is that I, I basically know him from the movie. I've, I've only seen a few, online a few of his comics, that, and they were all, like, totally Deadpool-centric comics. Yeah. So it was like I was expecting that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it, if that's what you like, that's what you like, and that's cool. But, like, at any time I read, like, a comic with him in it, it just takes all the seriousness out of it. Not like, you know, comics need to be super serious, but, like... Yeah, but if, I'm, if you are in a serious storyline and you throw that in, it's kind of like some of the jokes that don't land in uh, in the new Star Wars, the uh, the Last Jedi. Oh yeah, it's just kind of like I always I felt like some of the jokes didn't land quite right, and then the tone was really weird. Yeah, it's like something they were in the middle of something like super tragic, but they were also like joking, like it was Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, mm. yeah, there was a lot of that. In, in Infinity War, too. The first time I watched Infinity War, it really bothered me. Like, the part... Okay, so, like, um, one of the main... Like, right off the bat, like, when Thanos is holding uh, Thor's head, and, like, you know, Thanos just destroyed the fucking ship and all this stuff, and then uh, Thor's like, you talk too much. And it's, like, supposed to be funny, but it's like... It's, no, we don't, need, we don't need all those jokes. Like, I don't know. And then there's, like, a few other moments like that where it's just, like, it, it's not necessary like i don't know i don't like they they didn't bug me too much i don't i don't remember any that stood out in my head that i was like oh you know yeah like the the after i had seen it the first time it bothered me less and less with every viewing but the first time i saw it like i was just expecting it to be like oh shit the entire time and there was a lot of moments where it was just like peter dinklage just him being there took me out of it a little bit just because it was such a Deadpool-esque, like, wink and a nod that he was the giant dwarf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and plus, it's just him anyway. So it's like, no knock on his acting. He did... You yeah. Know, it's like, you wouldn't even remember that character. He'd be, like, extra B that handed someone their golf club or something yeah. in the background if it weren't for the fact that it was played by Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Uh, but still, I was just, the whole time, I was just like, oh, we're doing a dwarf joke here. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could see that. That what... His part in it too, because he it's implied that he made the Infinity Gauntlet for yeah. Thanos. So if he made the Infinity Gauntlet for Thanos, this is what I like. If he made the Infinity Gauntlet for Thanos, what was that glove in Thor One, and what was the you know that that they just go out of their way in in Ragnarok to say was a fake, and then um, then at the end of Age of Ultron, what does Thanos grab out of that thing and says, "I'll do it myself." If Peter Dinklage just made that fucking gauntlet for uh, for Thanos, I don't think he just. I think it had been it had been a while. So that that's my only explanation <clears throat> is that 
uh, P Peter Dinklage had been alone there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only, like, with that scene in Age of Ultron where Thanos grabs a glove, that had to be, like, had to be, have taken place, like, way before. The only thing is that the, the Marvel movies are not moving in the same timeline as we are, where it's just, like, because it's kind of implied that it's only been, like, when Infinity War starts, it's only been, like, six months or something like that since, uh, you know, uh, Civil War. It's been... No, I think it, it's mentioned it's, like, it's two years after that. Has it been two years? Yeah. Okay. I think. Um, I can't remember where I read that, but... Um, and then I want to say it was, like, it's, like, Black Panther takes place only, like, what, like, two weeks after, inf after yeah. the Civil War? Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know timelines. <laughs> I think I think I'm thinking about it too much. But that's the thing about saying that about a nerd nerd thing is it's just like no, they expect you to think about it that much. They're yeah. inviting it. Basically. <laughs> yeah, I liked how uh, they they sort of knocked off the. Um, remember in the beginning of Spider Man, there's that eight years later, um, like screen that comes up and it you know they're implying that um, Homecoming takes place eight years after the original Avengers. But then in Infinity War, Tony talks about how it's only been six years since the original Avengers. So I liked how they like sort of reset that because it that eight years later didn't make any sense as to like yeah. how long it had been or whatever. Hopefully they can uh, what you call it? Uh, what's the dude's name? Star Wars dude George uh, George, George Lucas. In subsequent releases, they can George Lucas that title screen out of the out of there. <laughs> Yeah. Give, give us the the collector edition. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I'd always really intended for Thor to be played by a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that'll happen. I'm sure that'll the Henry happen. Henry Cavill and some boobs. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a different different person's face and voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Speaking of Henry Cavill, it's like meanwhile. Yeah. Uh, DC is just like. I I finally saw uh, Justice League. And it wasn't, I don't feel like it was as bad as everyone was, like, ripping on it for being, but it was just so mediocre compared to oh, yeah. what we've become used to from, like, Marvel, that mm -hmm. it's, like, It's, yeah. I, I thought, like, I saw it in the theaters, and it's just tonally, you can just tell, like, the parts that Zack Snyder did, and you can tell yeah. the parts that Joss Whedon did. It's very, um, feels like it's been very hacked together. Yeah, and, like, the it was the biggest like offender in that is like okay so bruce wayne goes to talk to to uh arthur curry or whatever and you know aquaman's like throwing him up against the wall and like you know threatening him and this and that and then literally like the next scene they're like walking just like joking like it you know like fucking like nothing ever happened or whatever and it's just like it took all the seriousness away from the previous that, scene i feel like they're overcompensating on aquaman because of the reputation for he talks to fish or whatever yeah so they had to beat that to death and they have to make jason moana even more jason moana just to uh <laughs> yeah to boost street cred or whatever yeah yeah Levi says that yeah justice league is some ass <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know it's crazy but yeah, that movie was very mediocre. Um, you th you think they're better off just resetting the whole thing and like maybe keeping Wonder Woman, or what do you think? I don't think they should reset it. Um, it's too. I mean, there are already what like six ep six is it five or six movies in? Um, I think there are only like four or five. Aren't there's there? Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Wonder Woman, and Justice League. Yeah, so I guess there's only four. Um, and then Aquaman's coming out. Is it? Oh, I guess uh, 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 Suicide Squad. Was oh, yeah. The fifth one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that one. Um, and honestly, the best movie out of them all is Man of Steel, in my opinion. Yeah, me too. Um, if you take the if you take the scene where he lets um, Kevin Costner die out of that movie, to me, that movie is the shit. That's the only that was the only scene in that movie that I was like, what? That's fucking retarded. But um, yeah, that. That really bugged me. Yeah, it's like you should have done the heroic thing and said screw it and saved it. Yeah, you know? but other but than that, it seemed like it was supposed to give him a catalyst to be in this like soul searching. You know. Yeah. But could have done it a little bit smarter than a watching him go yeah. sucked into a tornado or something. <laughs> could have been cancer or something. You and know? who's gonna like? Okay, you're in the middle of a tornado. Like, if you went and saved him, like, who would even fucking know? Like, who would notice? 
And that like six people that were huddled under the bridge. The magic man who can fly and shoot lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that was the worst part of that movie. Um, also, but I other than that, that, I they really were liked gathering it. people underneath the the overpass part there. Yeah. Because you're not supposed to do that because that's where like debris piles up, so technically it would kill everyone. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like one person put out a video uh, back in the 90s where they did that and they survived and they, you know, credit it with like saving their life or whatever. But now everyone does that and it's like, yeah. it's actually super dangerous and like you sh- you'd be better off in the ditch next to it than up in there. Because yeah. It's, it's going to get you. Yeah. Was, that would be. So they say. Not good. Not good. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I know, Levi. They're definitely setting up for the Flashpoint paradox and for Superman being a killer. Uh, I don't think that's a story that mainstream audiences want from Superman. You know what I mean? It's cool for, like, insiders who have read the comics and are just, like, you know, are big fans of, like, Injustice, stuff like that. But uh, I, just for, like, your general movie-going audience that Marvel has eased in the weird. Yeah. You know, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, they were super scared about because it just gets a little weirder and a little weirder. But they're kind of, like... They've built rapport, and now they feel safe yeah. doing it. Whereas DC is just like weird in your face. Yeah, right well, now. DC doesn't have the, they don't have any patience. They don't build anything up. Like it took like Avengers was Marvel's what fifth or sixth movie. It wasn't like they just jumped in, you know, with both feet right away. Like which is what DC is trying to do. Um, DC even with Batman vs Superman, it's like three movies smashed into one. Like they ruined like the whole. They could have done a whole trilogy of movies on the death of Superman. And instead, made it good. Yeah. Instead, they fucking ruin it in like twenty minutes at the end of the movie. Um, that and, could have been a trilogy of movies. And I actually like that we don't get, like, for Batman, like, an origin story. I'm cool with that, skipping yeah. some origin stories for these guys that are, like, super yeah. ultra-known. Especially because DC's figures are actually more, well, until the Marvel Universe came along, yeah. were, like, more recognized by the public yeah. than, than Marvel figures. But, uh, yeah, it's just, like, there's got to be an in-between between the, you know, having to retread... Uh, origin story every goddamn time yeah and launching into uh you know we're right in the middle of everything and we're just gonna like cram four different arcs into one movie because we think we need like three we think it's a joel schumacher 90s batman movie and we we <laughs> yeah. if if we can't fill the poster with at least 10 faces of villains that are like make a blip in the yeah. movie, then we're not doing our jobs yeah Yep. Same with uh you know what really bugs me is the uh the fucking Venom movie coming out. That movie is just gonna be the worst. There's no way no matter how good that movie is, there's no way that movie can be good to me. Like Venom like starts with Spider Man and Spider Man's not in that movie. Yeah, that makes so, no goddamn sense yeah, to me whatsoever. It's like Sony's just the worst. Like they just they just wanna make money off of like the Spider-Man stuff, but they go about it so badly. Um, <clears throat> that yeah, that movie is just gonna be terrible. And the fact that they got Thomas Hart or Tom Hardy in it, um, I like Tom Hardy a lot. Me that's too. that's great casting. Yep. But it's gonna be a terrible movie. And the worst thing about that movie is that that just means we won't see Venom in the MCU. Like. Yeah, that's for the next me off 10, 15 it. years. Because you know? Venom would be fantastic for this this new Peter Parker that I really like yeah. to, to confront. I'd really yeah. like to see him fighting uh, Venom. Yeah. And I will never get that now. Yeah. It's like, you fucking assholes. Yeah, they just shit, shit, it, shit the bed and, like, you know, ruin that for people. Like, Tom, Oh, Levi says Tom Hardy should play the new Wolverine. Mm. You think he's. T- I think he's a little too old for it, maybe. Yeah. Because that he's at about the same age as Hugh Jackman, isn't he? Somewhere around there. Like Tom Hardy's dope. He would be a good Wolverine, but he like would. I don't think I'm not saying it's beyond his chops, I'm just like Yeah. They they should find a new face, I think. Yeah. And especially because Wolverine, when he is introduced, will be like you know, he'll be like the new Iron Man or Captain America of the MCU. Like I feel like they'll move past the Avengers and then they'll like 
give like the X Men like the Avenger treatment where like there'll be Wolverine movies, there'll be Gambit movies, there'll be Storm movies, and then they'll all come together and do an X Men movie like every like you know five years or whatever, and then you know they'll be they'll just branch off like that. I feel like that's what they'll do or they should do with the X Men because there's so many you know cool X Men characters that could just lead their own movies. You oh know. yeah. Um, Cause I feel like, like Scarlet Witch, they transplanted her from, from X Men and made her not a mutant. Yeah. And I feel like, there's a lot of characters they could just go ahead and do that with if that if that's the big hang up keeping them from being in the MCU. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Levi is arguing that Flashpoint isn't that underground anymore, which, and like I said, with the Injustice games and stuff like that, they've been hinting at it for like a decade now. Uh, I don't know. I just the cl- people. The people I know, and this is totally anecdotal, that are big Superman fans, really like the squeaky clean Superman of, like, and maybe I hang out with old people or something, but, uh, <laughs> of, uh, not Cavill, um, guy who played him the first time. Um, Famous guy. Yep. Uh, Christopher course. Reeve. Christopher Reeve. Thank you. Um, uh, but, and I'm just like, I, I think they're going to see an evil Superman movie and just be like, uh, no. And if, if the... DC Universe was doing really well. Yes, absolutely put yeah. that on. But the fact that they're already struggling just with like a basic premise <laughs> yeah. is like ugh, they're not ready for it. An evil Superman movie would be awesome if we had say like if that was say like the fourth movie in the Superman series. Yep. But to put it out like cuz there hasn't even been a Man of Steel 2 yet, to do it like so soon would be silly because we haven't grown to care about Superman just yet. Um, and and, it, and as much as Zack Snyder is the one that wants it, I think he's the wrong person to, to do it. Cause yeah, I think they're done with Zack Snyder. Maybe. I think, like, I was reading something, and they said, I mean, they, I know they gave the reason for Zack Snyder leaving Justice League as, like, you know, his daughter had died or whatever, which is terrible. Yeah. But they said that... Um, I mean, it came out that he was basically fired from Justice League, and that's okay. um, they just used that as a story to you know to, to not embarrass him or whatever. Sure. Um, yeah, but, it's awkward timing. Yeah, so I, I think he's done with all that stuff or whatever. But it would be cool to see um, because I really did like Man of Steel. I would think it would be cool to see another couple more Superman stories in that vein. And then if we did get an evil Superman story, that would be awesome. What's, what's Levi talking about now? Le- Levi says, Batman versus Superman. Bruce Wayne's dream of uh, the Flash warning him that Superman has the potential to be evil is the only proof I need. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And, and I like the, who they've got for the Flash. Well, I like Wonder Woman. I like the Flash. Mm-hmm. And as much as I was criticizing the way Jason Moana is like emo... Uh, you know, Aquaman. I think he'll be a good Aquaman. I, yeah. I, don't, I mean, people will laugh, but I think him doing a solo uh, Aquaman movie coming up here, yeah. it's like, that could be really solid. It's yeah. like, he does uh, that Frontier series on Netflix now, and he's done some other stuff since Game of Thrones, and it's like, I like him and stuff. He's good at it. So, yeah. Uh, I think it's got potential. He does a show I've been meaning to watch. I think it's called, like, The Red Road or something like that. It's on, like, Netflix or something. Um, but he's, it's like a native show. I've been meaning to watch it. Okay. And I just haven't. Um, but yeah, he, he did some show called, it's, it's not, like uh, and you're not thinking of Frontier where he is like um, half native, half Irish and he's like, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I just heard about it. Um, it, it, with Frontier, I don't know if you've seen it. It's like, uh, it's basically like Game of Thrones, but with fur trappers in like 1840s or something like that. Oh, really? In the Hudson Bay Company. So it's just like, there's like pieces on the board and it's just like, there's the tribes of the North that control the fur trade. There's the British, there's the Americans, and then there's the French, and then there's the privateers. And they're all like fighting in the middle and it's got a cool, super dramatic opening where it's like all these different factions are fighting for control of the fur trade. Oh, no, I never... Sounds interesting, though. It what is, what, what is it on? It's called Frontier and it's on Netflix. Okay. All right, yeah, that's another one I'll have to check out. I've been looking for a new series to watch. I've been, I've been just rewatching old workaholics shows now. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy, if you want twisted true crime thing, they just Netflix just put out their four part documentary about uh, 
Do you remember the 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 pizza bank pizza delivery guy bank robbery where the people kidnapped him and put him in an explosive collar and made him rob a bank for them and then they detonated him? Damn, no. Okay, that happened in like 2004 uh-huh. and I had no I you know, I don't I'd heard that headline and been like that is the most fucked up thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And then it happened in real life cuz it sounds like the fucking plot of the next Justice League movie. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> and uh I the, there's a reason it's a four parter. It's even more like beyond fucked up because it just like yeah. keeps getting more and more fucked up because it's just like. First off, I've decided that Erie, Pennsylvania, is probably like the most trashy place <laughs> on the planet based on the like because yeah. everyone's just like, well, so and so was prostituting this person and pimping out this person, which <laughs> you know. In the meanwhile, it was a one stop shop because then his brother was downstairs selling all the drugs. And, just, yeah. like, and it's it's like. And every person they interview is like an old, you know, not to be mean, but haggard white person that you could tell <laughs> is just like either deals meth or or is like like Addicted one degree of separation yeah. from a meth dealer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's all just like so and so, you know, with someone with bad teeth, just like so and so was trying to steal their daddy's fortune and blah blah. blah. You know, it's just like it. Yeah. It, what, what's it called? It's uh, I think it's called like evil genius or sup- like something like or yeah. Like evil genius or something. It's it's right at the top of their featured right now. Okay, it just came out this weekend. Yeah, I'll, I'll look that up because yeah, I, I need something to watch now. And it's it's really twisted because um, it's just kind of like so. It's like was he in on it? And then another person dies mysteriously, and then another person gets found in a chest freezer. Jeez. But that turns out to be unrelated to this, but is related to this. And it, yeah, it's just, it's just like a web of like. Jesus Christ, how many bodies are we going to find before we even figure out <laughs> who the accomplices are, let alone who actually masterminded the plan? I yeah. watched all four episodes. I rewatched the last one because I fell asleep part of the yeah. way through it because it was like 3 a.m. And uh, I still don't know who the fuck was the mastermind. <laughs> I think yeah. they're implying who it is, but I don't know. <laughs> how did... Okay, so if they... Well, I don't know. If they blow this guy up, like, how did... What, did he give them the money and then they blew him up or whatever? Well, he, got, or? he got caught, is the thing. Mm-hmm. So, they gave him instructions and an elaborate, uh... Um... Let's see. Frontier. Isn't that a movie with Nick Swart? <laughs> Levi... No, Levi, not that movie. It's, it's also called Frontier... But this is a Netflix series that's a serious drama, not not the comedy with Dick Swartz and Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'd be pretty fucking hilarious for them to show up and have Jason <laughs> Moana like, because he kills a lot of people in that show and uh, yeah. just take them out <laughs> like in the first five minutes. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, shit. Lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. So the deal was they set up a, like an elaborate. Uh, like scavenger hunt for it so like he was supposed to pick up this and then they picked up this cane gun they made for him i mean it's fucking james bond shit because he's already got like the giant bomb collar yeah they put him in a t-shirt to mock him that says guess what this is on on the front of the t-shirt yeah Send him in the bank. At first off, wouldn't you have been freaked out like the second that guy walked into a bank and had this giant thing on his Yeah. Because I mean, it's sticking out like this far. He looks yeah. like fucking Tony Stark had like a like mechanical <laughs> breakdown and had to like yeah. downgrade. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it, he was supposed to drop, you know, rob the bank, drop the money here, then go here where he'd get one key that would shut off one timer and that would buy him more time on the other timer and basically it'd be like a sequence of three keys. Oh, and, yeah just really overly elaborate kind of dumb plan. And yeah. Like super, it's like, it takes super intelligence to like build the thing they built. Yeah. But the plot is really, st- <laughs> I don't mean plot as in like a story. I mean, yeah. But kind of. <laughs> but if the plot is really stupid, if, it, if you, you'd say that if it hadn't happened in real life, yeah. the plan is really stupid. And, uh, yeah, that, and I think everybody pretty much like agrees, the investigators and stuff that, uh, he was. It was intended that he was never actually going to survive it. Man. So it was. It was basically going to be made impossible. And then they. It was super sadistic. They like the guy whoever made the bomb, put like a, a cell phone that wasn't connected to anything into it with wires and stuff like that, and a bunch of warnings on it that were like, if you cut this wire, the redundant power supply will kick in. And so, there's a whole bunch of spoof wires and spoof parts that are just designed to make it like take that much longer for a bomb squad to try and disarm it. And Crazy. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that tonight. That sounds fucked up. Huh. I was commenting on two separate points of discussion. <laughs> See Eisenberg as Danny McBride. Strap a bomb to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never seen that one, man. That's that's cool. So he's saying that the thirty minutes joke with Jesse Eisenberg is that uh, there was a movie called Thirty Minutes or Less with Jesse Eisenberg. Oh yeah, Danny McBride. I remember uh, that movie. Straps him into a bomb. Yeah. Yeah, I, for all I know, it's inspired by the, that this movie. thing that happened in 2004. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just it's such a like Batman plot. You know? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's crazy. But then you meet the people that are behind it, and you're just kind of like, there's nobody like that smart or charismatic on the bad guy side. It's all just like, <laughs> you know, no, toothless Ed and. The retarded guy that they tricked into loading the body into the freezer. And yeah. Yeah, just, it's just, it looks like a casting call for fucking The Hills Have Eyes or, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's like those kind of like people are yeah. all, like every, and it's like every person of interest, every suspect, every victim. <laughs> they're all like that. It's like, whew, whew. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a shot tonight. It's. <laughs> It's crazy. But yeah, Frontier is good. Uh, Evil Genius is good, or Criminal Genius, or whatever it is. Just if you search, if you search Genius in there, it's going to pop up right away. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else have I watched? Oh, uh, Cobra Kai on YouTube Red kicks ass. I keep seeing everybody talk about that. It's so fucking good. Um, it looks it. I saw I watched the trailer. It looks pretty awesome. Um, I didn't have that high of expectations going in because, to be honest, I barely... I was so young that I barely remember and wasn't really really that into the original, uh, like, movie. Yeah. But, damn, the, the TV show's good because it's, like, it's got the humor of a, like, uh, um, kingpin. That's what I've been telling people is that it channels Kingpin really well, which is high praise for me because I really like that movie. That it's, it's the loser movie humor. Kingpin, yeah, <laughs> where it's like loser humor, where it's like wakes up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, with a hook hand. Yeah, and, you know, having to sleep with his landlady to make rent. <laughs> you know, just like and everything's super trashy. Everything's depressed. It's just like, especially early on, that's the way it is for the Cobra Kai guy, and yeah. it's fucking hilarious. Kingpin's one of like the best movies. It's I put that in my top five comedic movies of all time oh it's so good <laughs> it's yeah it's it's not as vulgar because they made this like a family show like you could watch it with the whole family yeah but there is like that what like he's still driving the car that he drove in the original movie so it's like <laughs> the firebird or whatever from like you know, 84 or something. Yeah. So, like, the paint is all, like, gnarly. Like, it's been spray-painted red back over parts where the real paint flaked off. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. And uh, and then they do a really good job with it, like, having heart, too. And actually being a cool, like... I'm one of those people who speculates about what happens to characters after a movie ends. Yeah. And uh, this really does that a lot, where it's, like... Uh, in fun ways where it's just kind of like you know the guy that won the the kid that that won the tournament and stuff uh his you know he's got this ultra awesome life and from the outside the cobra kai guy just hates him so much because everything in his life is just perfect and blah 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 uh but by the same token then they do episodes where it's from his perspective and you see like his second kid is just like a total fuck up his teenage daughter hates him uh, <laughs> and then he's got the, the rival car dealer that, like, I, I won't spoil anything, but it's, like, doing all sorts of shit that's, like, directly aimed at him with the ads mocking him and stuff like that. And <laughs> everyone's just kind of like, yeah, your whole karate gimmick and your ads. And it's like, it's not a gimmick. I actually won a tournament. And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. And, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, they did a really good job with it. Isn't, it's on, like, YouTube or something, right? It's on shit, YouTube right? Red. So you got to have the commercial-free... It's like, I think it's like ten dollars a month is what I pay, uh -huh. and it's it works for me because I already had YouTube Red, and uh -huh. I've never had a YouTube Red show before that I would like actually watched more than a couple episodes of, because um, some some of them were just garbage. What are what are the other benefits of YouTube Red? It's completely commercial free. So if you're like me and you watch just a, like I told Amanda when I did it, I watch 
YouTube, probably 80% of my video is just like little five minute, 10 minute videos on YouTube. Yeah. And then there's like commercials on all of them. It's like now no commercials. I hop on someone else's YouTube and see how many commercials there are. I just want to throw up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's amazing for that. And then you can play the audio on anything with your phone, like your screen shut off. Oh, okay. And then the big thing for that is that then you get the YouTube music app, so you can create playlists and download music to, like, st- basically it gives you Spotify, but through mm-hmm. YouTube. So huh. it's like, if any song exists as a as a YouTube video, you can basically have it in your playlists and play it like it's on an iPod. But nice. You've got it in your phone, and it's just included in YouTube Red. That Everything's a fucking subscription nowadays. It's like... How they get the you. worst. Like I, I have. I mean, I, I have. Uh, what you call it? Um, Hulu and uh, Netflix, and then uh, um, what else? What I, I don't know. I got a. I just signed up for fucking I, Apple Music, which I'm really fucking pissed about. Like Apple Music, like you can literally download any fucking song that's ever recorded for like it's like ten bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And it's just considered like a stream on you know when you listen to it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I was like, man, like who the fuck's gonna buy any fucking music anymore when you can just have you know Apple Music and download whatever you want for free? Like why would you ever pay for fucking music again? Yeah. Um, and then like uh, so I got it. Like I I was aware of it, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it. And then like because I'll always buy like albums on itunes and stuff like that but you don't really own those albums like because you can only listen to it like on your phone or you know other apple devices you can't like burn a cd off it or anything like that oh you can burn a cd off of it from itunes yeah how do you do that i I don't know i used to do it all the time (laughs) really yeah huh i yeah i I could never i never figured that out but uh that's all that's in my car is a bunch of burned cds with different stuff i've because yeah i haven't bought a physical album in I mean, back going back to like 2004 or whenever the iTunes Music Store launched. That, yeah, that was my thing because I already had an iPod and I never looked back. So it's just like the only time I used CDs after that was I burned digital music onto CDs so I could have it in my car. Yeah, that's all I do too. Is just have I had a bunch of burned CDs, but I never figured out how to burn like iTunes music. Huh. I don't know. I'll have to. I guess I never really thought you even could. So I'll have to fucking look into that uh tonight probably because yeah i was like who the fuck like if you could just pay 10 bucks and get everything for free why would you ever pay for a fucking and i wonder if you can burn cds of the um the stuff that comes from apple music instead of itunes store yeah i'm talking about itunes like i bought the album yeah 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 i've never i don't have apple music because i was it was a bridge too far and at the time i was still really liked pandora yeah and so that's what i stuck with and then i ended up dropping pandora yeah because it just it got they like cranked up the price and wouldn't i used to do the annual like 30 dollars for a year of music and i was just like deal sold (laughs) yeah and uh then they were like, well, it's going to go to $10 a month or something like that. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to stick with my iTunes then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, man, it's everything is a subscription. You know what's the shit, though? Do you have MoviePass? Uh, no, I don't. MoviePass, that's what I was trying to think of, is is awesome. But I think it's going to fucking, I think it's going to be dead here pretty soon. Or at least be changed drastically. Um I, well, I heard that, that they're going to lose their whole, uh, like, Netflix model of uh, theater movies. I'm just going to pop this door open. Yeah. Air. <laughs> yep. Um. Let's see. Um, Levi is saying that, uh, yeah, I totally remember that Levi with Barney Stinson having the theory that Cobra Kai was the good guys. And that's why he basically worshipped the, uh, the, the main Cobra Kai guy, who is the main guy in the TV show. That's, <laughs> that, the whole thing with Barney Stinson is probably and yeah daniel is the bad guy uh that's probably the reason i watched i i gave it a chance was because i just thought the barney stinson thing was so hilarious we're just like that kick wasn't regulation daniel (laughs) was the bad guy the whole time yeah and there's fucking hilarious parts in cobra kai where he's like he's got his little apprentice and he's telling him the story of what happened and they like all the time are playing clips from the original movie like spliced in as like flashbacks yeah when someone's narrating but what's hilarious is everyone is always narrating like their version of what happened but they oh, show really? what the movie showed yeah so it's like 
So yeah, you know, he, he sprayed me with the hose in the bathroom, so me and my friends, you know, we went and confronted him, and then it placed the part of the, uh, the flashback in the movie where they corner Daniel and just beat the shit out of him on the, hell, at the Halloween dance or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's just like, we were just confronting him because he was the bully. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I don't know, I'll have to give that a shot, but yeah, it's uh, weird. Weird fucking... That would bring in, like, everything back now. It's just, like, all the old this shows. This is the first one I've liked that was a nostalgia... Like, the Full House, and there's been a bunch of other, like, ones where they just brought back the cast for, for a season for, like, Netflix or Amazon or something yeah. like that. I haven't... I have really not liked many of those, but Cobra Kai is different. I feel like this one, it's it's got comedy potential, and I feel like good characters and good actors and the story it's well written and executed and it's like i like i said i didn't care that much about the original uh did you like the x-files or did you watch the x-files i didn't watch any of the new x-files okay i think i watched one part of the first new episode and the x-files just doesn't work post 9-11 why do you say that it you know, the X-Files existed in a universe where there was this... It was the atmosphere of the 90s when you had, like, Waco and Ruby Ridge and the Unabomber and stuff like that. Uh, and this atmosphere of, like, an oppressive government and conspiracy and the government is all-powerful. And, and yes, I realize the government can be even more so. But I, I don't know. I just... I, I couldn't get into it. It's because it's not the same atmosphere. And yeah. I always liked the the sci-fi parts of X-Files more than the conspiracy parts. And the first new season seemed like was really leaning on the whole drones and surveillance and 9-11 and stuff like that really hard. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just wasn't wasn't a fan. Hmm. I, I couldn't get into it. But I liked it back in the day. I just... And maybe it just... I changed over time. I yeah. Know. It definitely has, like, some, uh... Some, like... I don't know. Like, I, I, I really liked the X-Files, especially growing up or whatever, but, like, it, it definitely, uh... I, I wish they would have gone further into, like, the whole, like, mythology of, like, the, the show or whatever. Yeah. But they it was more, like... Like, there was... Because there's been two revival seasons now, yep. and um, there's probably, out of those two seasons, there's probably only, like, f three or four episodes that really deal with, like, the actual, like, mythology of the show rather than just, like, the, the monster, monster of the week, week type deal. Okay. Which a lot of those Monster of the Week episodes are really good. Like it, overall, I really liked it a lot. But I okay. wish they would have gotten more into the the overall like story of it. Like um, the first season really ended on like a like the aliens were invading. Like it was like it was like okay. oh shit, they're this is how they're gonna fucking end the show. And then they brought it back, um, and that was just like a dream sequence or something oh, silly shit. like that. <laughs> yeah, it was, see that would piss. That, yeah. What's funny is I would have drifted away and then come back for the first episode of season two, seen that, and be like, "Fuck you!" And yeah. walked away again. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, it was if that if they'd have just left it like that and that was like the end because it was like you know that it, it ends where like they're on like the interstate and like all, everybody's like fleeing town and like a UFO comes like right over Mulder and Scully and like it fucking beams down and that's like the end of the fucking season like god damn all right that's cool that would have been cool if that was just like the end of like everything but then when they brought it back it was yeah and i felt like that was I liked that climax for the t for the original TV show where it was like the trial of Mulder and they brought back like yeah. so many of the recurring characters and stuff like that to testify like that little boy that was like the super genius and stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know they took out the smoking man because he was in that cave with that mineral or whatever that protected him. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of felt like that was. I felt like all the stories for those two characters that needed to be told were were told, and yeah, yeah, some of the magic was was gone. But man, I have some great memories of some of the original original series. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shows of all time. I I love that show. Yeah, and I've got I've got some friends that are super into. Uh, I never got into it. I was probably too young or something. But uh, they're super into Twin Peaks, and they really loved the. The reboot of that on Showtime. I wanted to. I tried to watch the, like whenever they announced that. Like I tried to watch like the um, the old series, and I only got like one or two episodes in, um, but I just couldn't get into it. 
I don't know. It's supposed to be like super weird, though, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, there's all sort of there's like demons and supernatural uh, stuff going on, and there's basically there's like this other dimension out in the woods called the Red Lodge, the Black Lodge, and then like the Black Lodge is where the demon yeah comes from, and yeah, it just it basically it was like the precursor to like early lost where everything is super cryptic and bizarre and mysterious and yeah. which I like that kind of stuff but I only like it if they actually have a comprehensive like here's where we're going with it. Yeah. Whereas lost, you know, it was very clear towards the end there that it was just like they were making up it as they as they went along. Yeah. Unfortunately. Lost was I'm still trying to broke my heart. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to like uh go through that again um I, with with my daughter. Um, ah. like I've only watched, like we'll watch like one episode, like a week at best, like maybe like once every other week or whatever. I can hardly ever get her to like watch TV with me anymore. So like, um, whenever we do, I try to like, let's watch an episode of Lost and then she'll be like, you know, well, she is cool with that, but that I can't get her to watch any more than one. So we're only on, on like episode eight and it's been like four months since we've been trying to like watch it or whatever. Oh, um, what was your? Yeah, it's like uh, um, the one with the clones and replicants and stuff like that on uh, Netflix. Um, some oh, Altered Carbon. Oh, okay. That's that's one that uh, I really like. But a man and I were trying to watch it together as a couple with that series, and so I was good and I didn't cheat. But I think we're stuck at like episode five, and I haven't. Is that show good? Since. I've I've heard a, uh, I've heard a couple of different uh, people talk about that show. It's pretty good. It's not like this is amazing, which is part of why I didn't cheat and watch yeah. more of it. But <laughs> uh, but it's good. I'm interested to find out where it's going. Yeah, uh, and I feel like future seasons could be really good, and it's got a lo- it's got a really cool, uh, you know, world sandbox to play in. That's like kind of half Gattaca, half. Blade Runner kind of thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that could be a lot of fun. But, uh, but yeah, I'll have to see. And we'll have to see if Amanda ever, like, decides that she actually wants to watch more of it or <laughs> if I'll just have to finally do it. Yeah. Huh. Crazy. It's another one like that, but I think I went ahead and watched the rest of Lost in Space. The new Lost. Oh, I watched yeah. watched that. And I liked that. And, uh... I think I'm, and then I'm going back and rewatching it with Amanda, and I think I'm only about halfway through it with her on that. Is that worth? Would you recommend that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, my studio guy was talking about that um, that show. It sounded all right. Um, did you ever watch? I can't remember. It's like a date. Um, it's on Hulu with James Franco. Um, oh, the. Um, it's a Steve. Six twenty three. 63 yeah the, the date of kennedy's assassination yeah uh yes the series was kind of a letdown uh the book kind of left me the same way where it's like the, the premise is cool yeah i really like it but at the end it's just kind of meh and, and that's just kind of the feeling it, it left me with yeah and the the series was the same way because it followed the book very very faithfully yeah I really liked it, but then, I, yeah, it was, right, like, the end really, like, let me down towards the end or whatever. Yeah, but. like, the whole, you know, spoilers, the the whole, like, the world gets blown up, but we don't get any, like, details on why Kennedy being, ass- or not being assassinated would cause that big of a, like, <laughs> yeah. everything is fucked. Yeah. Um, I felt like that could have used more exploration and explanation, but it's clearly that's not the story he was about telling. What he wanted to do was, you know, tell a story about the era that Kennedy lived in. And, yeah. And it, and then f- focus way more on uh, Oswald. Yeah. Which yeah. I'm kind of like, you know, Oswald is weird and it was interesting, but I'm, he's not like, I don't know, I don't get into the like, the super, super analyzing and worshiping like, and I say this as a guy who right now is binge watching the old or binge <laughs> listening to the old episodes of Last Podcast on the Left. Oh, the yeah. only reason I let them get away with it is it's fuck, <clears throat> they do it fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but I don't get into like the super analyzing serial killers and assassins and stuff like that. <laughs> but that show I I listen to because they just God they have the one guy that does the voices and just 
invents like basically a character for every serial killer. Yeah. And just, <laughs> their analysis is just like, well, so it just wasn't getting his dick sucked, and that's why he did this. <laughs> it's like Charles Manson was just a hippie who liked drugs and liked fucking around, <laughs> who got in way over his fucking head. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about like how he was younger and he, uh, uh, when he was like six basically being raped in prison at 16 was like the best time of his life because everything was like locked down and controlled yeah so in the end what like locking him away for life like they did was actually like the best thing that could have ever happened to him yeah. he's super happy in prison because <laughs> it's like you know he grew up so poor in the 30 and i didn't realize he was that old but he grew up so poor that it was like it's like i actually have a toilet to shit in and i've got food and you know walls <laughs> around me so it's like i'm doing good brother and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then just, you know, play some sound clips from him that are just fucking insane. But, like, the more they analyze him, are just kind of like, okay, I see what he's saying here. It's like, that's more clever than I would have expected, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> yeah. I just love the whole, like, you know, they're very, like, boil it down. It's just like, well, he was he was getting off on this, right? Like, sexually, like, oh, yeah, that's what was, that's the reason for this. <laughs> and it, it's super, like, crude humor like that, black humor applied to paranormal sci-fi and yeah. uh especially the heavy hitters that's what they call it when they do a, a like three-part series about a serial killer or a cult yeah and uh those are always hilarious and good and yeah <laughs> really Crazy. like that podcast i've been listening to uh, my fa- i listen to the uh legion of skanks a lot like it's, legion of skanks <laughs> yeah nice it's, it's uh big j okerson uh lewis gomez and um I can't remember the other guy, but it's just a comedy podcast where, you know, they do it in front of a live audience and everything, and it's really funny. It's like my favorite thing to listen to. Um, that, and then I, I get, I just start listening to the Breakfast Club. I didn't know they had a podcast or whatever, but it's like the New York radio station with like the New York DJs and they sure it's just talk about like hip hop stuff or whatever. But I've been listening to that. Um, they just turn their like Monday morning show into a podcast every day or their morning show into a podcast every day so you get a new one like every every day that just was like their whatever they did that morning or whatever um but yeah bill burr all that stuff but nice and random like joe rogan episodes depending on who he has on or whatever yeah i do that i picked him back up and i just decided the way to do it is if he's got someone i'm interested in i listen to the episode otherwise i just skip it yeah and i'm getting way more that as i've added more and more shows it's getting the point that i just cannot keep up with them all yeah and i've kind of decided why do i listen to episodes that i don't care about it's like but i still want to be subscribed which it's harder when you do like i listen to a lot of the like audio dramas and stuff like that that people put together yeah and you can't skip episodes with that even if you feel like they're going to be mediocre because you yeah. gotta know what's gonna happen next otherwise you jump in and be like what the fuck this <laughs> yeah. guy's dead what <laughs> and yeah. uh so that's it's harder on those but a lot of them where they just do a segment or like a topic yeah it's easier to just be like that's a thing that interests me or mm, no yeah i have to tune out whenever he starts talking about ufc stuff which is a lot like yeah i just don't i just don't care <laughs> about that kind of stuff but he's obviously very passionate about it but sure um but yeah, it just depends on who's on there. I don't know. Sten said he's going to be calling here. I told him to call by 6.30, so just waiting for him to give us a call here. And Sounds good. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it hasn't been too bad with just the two of us so far. No. <laughs> if we kept ourselves busy. Yeah. With Levi chiming in every once in a while, too. Yeah. Yeah, people just listening to it are just going to be like, what is Levi just can't talk now or what? Like <laughs> just replying to him once in a while. It's like he's like in the chair from Star Trek. He can only communicate with like one blink for yes, two blinks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, I don't know. But yeah, I have been binging the shit out of uh, last podcast on the left, which. It's not a good idea when I'm going to be spending a week by myself. Yeah. Because it's just like, it's all serial killers and paranoid, like, conspiracy theories. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> it seemed like a great idea until I woke up at 3 a.m. and couldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's what I like about, like, uh, now that like, I'm back to working uh, where I can just sit there and just fucking listen to podcasts all day. That's what I do. So, like, um, I really, yeah, need to get some more things to listen to because 
you know, Legion of Skanks only comes out once a week, so <laughs> I need yeah. some something other. The one thing about podcasting is there's never a shortage of yeah. stuff. You just got to discover new good stuff is the trick. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a Spider-Man podcast that I listen to a lot, too, uh, that I really enjoy. But they only come out, like, once every two weeks. It's Yeah, and that's the tough part, too, is that usually the really good ones, like, it's, there's, like, a like a Venn diagram or something like that with, like, how frequently they come out versus how good they are. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> that's why Dan Carlin's hardcore histories are, like, the cream of the crop, the best of the best, the podcast yeah. everyone wants to be. Yeah, and they're six hours long, but he only puts one out every, like, every half year. You know, like every yeah. six months or so, yeah. or more sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Michael Rappaport too. I listen to him often. I like his point of view on things. I found myself getting into more into like NBA now that I listen oh. to his podcast because I don't even really care about the NBA, but he talks about it so much that I've. I find myself like checking out the playoff scores and stuff like sure. that when I didn't even I didn't even care. It's it's weird like how easily like you can get like into things that like I don't know, that I would just never be into you. Just through through listening. The right to podcast can get people into like all sorts of crazy stuff. Before you know it, you've turned your spare bedroom into like a <laughs> giant podcast studio. And yeah. you're, you're producing so many podcasts, you literally can't count or keep track of how many there are anymore. You just have to open your phone calendar to know which one to run to next. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I need help. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. I don't know. How's that? Uh, I keep. I have your uh, the like the. Was it the the macabre one? Macabre grimoire. Yeah, yeah, I, I have that. I've subscribed to it, but I just haven't had a chance to listen to it. But um, I've been meaning to check that one out. It's doing pretty good. I think it. I think like all of these other, other than the, you know, like when Urban Indians launched, that was just like an explosion, like right off the bat. Yeah. The USA Today article. Um, yeah. The rest of them tend to be like a slow burn thing where it's just like you start and it's pretty, I mean, you've got like 20 people or so, and yeah. it just slowly builds from there. And I yeah. Think Macabre Grimoire is building. I think there's a lot of like people who hold out to see like, because it's bi-weekly, like this Wednesday when the next one comes out, we'll see how that one, how many people stuck with it after the initial three. Yeah. There's, I have four. I just looked at my thing. I have to, I'll have to start listening to those. But yeah, that's something that interested me that I want to start checking out I'll probably check out Zach's too I like his point of view on things and think he's yeah. pretty funny I th you know I was really hesitant to take on another podcast precisely because of that issue yeah. you know of just having so many but because it's Zach I'm kind of like yeah. okay I've got to take one you know if, it, if it's Zach doing a podcast I want yeah. it you know yeah yeah I think he's pretty funny I need to go to more comedy shows I haven't gone to any in like a long long time I just get so damn tired on the week. I, I don't know if just getting old or what, but it's like I'm always like Wednesday night. I'm going to the the open mic this Wednesday night. I'm go I'm gonna do it this time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I get home and I'm just like, <sighs> yeah. Nope, it's I'm over. done. I'm just gonna lay in bed and stare at my phone until I lose consciousness in like an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Doesn't help lately. I've been waking. I don't know why, but I've been waking up super early and then going to bed super early. So it's yeah. Like, I really am getting old. <laughs> I know that's man. what it's. It's so bad. Like like, um, my favorite thing out of like my favorite time of the week at like all week is fucking like Saturday or Sunday morning, getting up at like eight a.m. like drinking coffee, just listening to music, reading, or you know, just yep. it's like just it's just old man shit. It's just <laughs> like like what the fuck. <laughs> I'll just drink a pot of coffee and like fucking be listening to music or reading comics or something. And I think that's the threshold where you you officially become old. When it's like, you when you're younger, it's punishment that you have to stay in. Yeah, and <laughs> it's like even a Cobra Kai at one point when someone grounds their daughter or something like that. I'm just kind of like, oh, that'd be nice to not have to go anywhere, <laughs> right? Drive anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just read a magazine. Yeah. Oh. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, just depending on what I did the night before, if I can make myself get up. But then sometimes it's like it's like encouragement to not do anything the night before. Be like, you know, I'm just gonna stay home tonight, so tomorrow morning I can get up and and watch my stories and read my coffee and 
do all that. I don't know. He should be calling any second now, I would imagine. Is there anybody else watching aside from Levi? Nope. <laughs> we're, we're an hour and 20 minutes in, and I think we've talked everyone out. Yeah. Oh, David Alpers just joined. Oh, there we are. And now because I said his name, he'll disappear. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they saw me. Don't, don't call me out. Don't put me on blast <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, he just he said he's about to call. Okay. All right, let's get to it. So, how do you know uh, Sten Jody? Um, I he met him. We did a show together in uh, Minneapolis. Um, and then, but he's he's pretty big on the native hip hop scene right now. Um, but yeah, we that's the only time I've ever met him that I believe or I can remember is uh we did a show with Chase Manhattan in Minneapolis. Brought a good. I'd say probably like three, four years ago. Uh, and speaking you. of... Yeah. Hello? What's going on? What's going on? Stan, what's up, man? How you doing? Pretty good. How you guys, man? How you doing, bro? Good, good. Thanks for calling today, man. We, uh... All my other podcast people were, uh... Were out, so it was just me in here today. Just <laughs> me and Robert what's talking up? shit. Yeah. Yeah, how's your, how's your day going so far, man? Pretty good, man. Just... Hanging out with my wife and kids and stuff, Mother's Day, you know. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, uh, you just dropped a new video the other day, right? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, man. Why don't you tell us a little yeah, bit about man. that? <laughs> yeah, um, the song, man, uh, I, I dropped uh, two albums last year. One was, uh, Cut Your Throat, and the other one was, uh, Seven Generation Prophecy, and you know, of course, you know, I, I won the award for the Seventh Generation Prophecy and stuff. And, I don't know, Concrete Warrior just kind of got, kind of just fell away. Nobody was really paying attention to it. So I, uh, I've i always wanted to do a video for this song, uh, Hate Me If You Want to. You know, the song was just really dope. And I just always had this idea of doing a song or doing a video for the song. And, uh, yeah, man, I finally decided, you know, it was actually just a a uh, day that I. It was really nice up here, man, in Iowa. Like it was finally all the snow melted, and like it was nice out. So I hit up my boy that day, man, uh, Beezy the Real, and uh, told him, man, uh, you should come up here and shoot, shoot a video. He's like, well, to what song? So, I don't know yet, man. When you get here, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's and, up. Uh, yeah, so, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll come on up, man. And uh, it was just kind of thrown together. It really wasn't, like, anything planned, man. I, uh, I just got some new lights in and stuff, so I pulled those out. And uh, one of my buddies was around the corner here for my crib, uh, uh, Dustin Anderson. And he's like, um, I hit him up because he's got the Impala. And I was like, man, you should pull up the Impala to the shop, man, and uh, let me shoot this video real quick, bro. He's like, yeah, I got you. So he whips up and pulls up, and the video man pulls up. And we shoot the video, man, and, you know, <laughs> the songs are dope anyway. So, you know, it's just kind of straightforward, you know, hate me if you want to, you know, no matter what I'm doing, you know, you can hate it or you can love it, it doesn't matter, you know. And so... You know, we put the song together, put the video together, man, and the homeboy Beasy Real killed it on the editing. You know, his camera's just really awesome. And he pulled the drone out, man, it was cool. He pulled the drone out, too. And, uh, yeah, man, it's taking off, man. It's like, it's already like 11,000 views. It just dropped it Friday afternoon. Nice. Hell yeah. That's yeah, dope. I mean, that's, uh, that's like all fans. Like, I have a. I mean, other than me just sharing it to other, you know, uh, groups and platforms and stuff, like, that's all I'm really doing, and, you know, it's just it's just getting shared up, so, hopefully it just keeps going, man, you know, it's a blessing, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, that's dope when you get that, like, organic growth with just, like, your fans without having to, like, really, you just put it out there and let them do the work, really. 
Right, right. And I haven't, I haven't put no money behind it or no, I mean, other than paying for the video, man, to come and do the video, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, other than that, you know, I haven't, I haven't put any money into it just as, as of right now. I might, when it starts to slow down and stuff, and throw some dollars in the boost post and see what that does, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, I'm just going to let the, let the fans do their thing, man, because they're awesome. You know, they're sharing it up, man. Yeah. Now you've been you've been in this game for a long time, man. How, when uh when did you f- first start uh putting putting music out like uh, professionally? Oh man, I mean, I've been through some ups and downs with my music careers, uh, you know, along with my life uh, career, just being trying to survive this world and going in and out of jail and messing up and making mistakes. And, you know, when I started doing music, I was like, I don't know, I was probably about. 13 or 14, playing around in the garage with my buddies, man, you know, on the front porch of people's cribs and, you know, drinking 40s, smoking blunts, man, and <laughs> that's really kind of where it came from, and yeah. when I started doing uh, professional stuff, man, it was probably, I got out of got out of county jail in Nashville, Tennessee, probably 2002, and the first time I ever hit a studio, like a real like a real studio, like, you know, and one of the guys I was locked up with told me to come on through, and when you get out, hit me up, so I did, and, you know, I went by there and recorded one of my first songs, which I can't find in anywhere, there's nowhere to find this song, but, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I recorded one of my first songs, and it kind of just grew from there as far as, like, a real passion, because after you get in the studio, I mean, I'm sure you know, man, like, you get that first recording under your belt, you feel like, oh man, you did something. So, you know, I just kept on, you know what I mean? I, I wanted that feeling, you know what I mean? Of, of, of laying some shit down and riding to my own stuff, you know what I mean? And so that that's where it went, man. And I, I bounced around state to state, met different people, met a guy that was down in Oklahoma that lived in Iowa. And uh, we started doing music together. And me and him did a lot of music together. I'm talking like maybe about five or six albums together, you know, and uh, I was under a different name. I went by Sirius back then, and uh, we were the Bootleg Boys, and we dropped like, yeah, about six six albums, man. And, nice. and uh, you know, that just didn't pan out, and it was it was getting to where... You know, I wanted to make some different music, and, you know, I was growing within my heritage, too. You know, I was finding out more about my native culture, and I was getting more understanding where that was going, and I just started doing my own thing, and then I got I got signed to uh, Red Vinyl Records, man, with Lightfoot, man. Oh, yeah? I didn't and, know that. Uh, yeah, man, and that was in 2011, and... Uh, he shot me down to Miami and, you know, I met some good people down there and I, I, I kind of peeped the game, you know, I peeped what was going on and, you know, I kind of vibed out what, how it was really going. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, that, that relationship didn't pan out in the end and I parted ways with them, you know, nothing, you know, there's no real hateful feelings, but, you know, I, I, I found out what was going down and, I, I kind of took, you know, that as a lesson, you know what I mean, and what was going on in the game and how how the perception of things happened. And, uh, you know, I took that and I grew from that. I came back up here to Iowa, and, you know, I was, you know, I, that whole decision-making when I went to Miami kind of made, made my family life a little rocky and things happened within my family. And, you know, it, again, it taught me a lesson. And I grew from that as well, you know, and, you know, now I'm I'm back up here doing my own thing, and I built and built my own studio. And uh, from there, you know, I worked with this this guy named Don Murrow, man. That gave me a chance to do tattoos up here when I was up here, legit. You know, and gave me a job. And so all that extra money, and you know, all my extra money, I would sacrifice it. You know, I put it back into my music. I put it back into my music. I put it back into my music. And, you know, I grew my own studio. I acquired. You know my own my own stuff, and you know, like I said, I peeped game from what was going on down in Miami, and <clears throat> I just did my own thing with it and ran with it. And uh, you know, now there was an opportunity where my 
a mentor wanted to step down from ownership of the tattoo shop. And at this point in my career, I had enough, you know, where I felt like I could do this. So I went ahead and took over the ownership of the tattoo shop, changed the name. And, you know, now I'm an owner of the tattoo shop and I have my my own recording studio within that tattoo shop. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I'm doing, man. You know, I'm providing for my family, I'm paying bills. You know, that's another thing why I dropped the video the way I did, because it's, it's like I'm finally getting to a point in my life where I feel good about the accomplishments that I'm making, you know. Besides the uh, accolades and all that, like, besides the whole, you know, awards and all that stuff, I don't need that for validation. That's cool that people want to recognize me and stuff, and that's great, and I'm thankful and grateful for it. But, you know, I don't need those to prove, like, to my children and my wife that I love them and that we do it good, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, for all the fans, you know, for all the fans, it's like, it's great. Like, I, I'm like, I'm super, you know, humbled by everything that's been happening, you know, but uh, it's definitely, it's definitely nothing compared to my family and, and their happiness when they look at me and they're proud of what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Yeah, you won you won the Native American Music Award last year for best hip hop, right? Yeah, yep. Was that your was that your first time going to the Native American Music Awards? Yeah, that was my first time going, but it was um it was my second time to be nominated for something. So like the first time I was nominated for my song Fire Inside uh three times the year before, but I didn't win, you know. And yeah. then, um, this year they they uh, I, or last year I put in both of the albums, Concrete Warrior and that, but Seven Generation was the one that was nominated, and you know uh, something just told me, man, you know, you know, sacrifice some dollars, head out there, show your face, you know, and see what happens, you know what I mean? And I had no idea I was gonna win. I didn't know what was, you know what was going to happen and uh, when <clears throat> when they called the uh, single of the year because I was also up for single of the year this last year too and when they called that and I didn't win that you know that kind of hurt I was like oh man I was like I was thinking man at least just get the single and you know we do we don't have to win the album of the year you know what I mean and uh, but man when they did that one first and I didn't get it I was like oh man and, uh, cause it's just me and my wife, man. She's a ride or die, man. She went up there with me, was there on my side, and we were both nervous, you know, hands sweating. Yeah. You know what I mean? And <laughs> they did the uh, album of the year, man, and we won it, man. And, geez, it, was, it sounded like it was just me and her in there screaming for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's you a good know, feeling, man. Everybody's quiet. They didn't know who the hell. They didn't know who the hell this daddy was. <laughs> what the hell was going on? <laughs> who was that? You know. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, man, it, it was a great feeling, man. It was it was really awesome, and you know, I was glad to share it with my wife and stuff, man. And you know, like I said, we're 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 kind of new to this because I just be you know, really, really grinding, and, you know, when I go out there, it's really just doing shows wherever I can, you know, and, and, uh, the fans just being there, and it's, you know, I've never really had no flashy stuff like that, like, going up there and walking red carpets and doing all the interviews and stuff, like, so that was an experience, and, you know, again, like I said, everything that followed after is just a blessing, it's good, you know, I'm grateful for everything, you know? Hell Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's badass, man. That's that's inspiring to a lot of people to, you know, see where you've come from and where you're at now and you know, that's that's hella dope, man. Keep up the great work. Yeah, man, you know, and like at the end of the day, I always tell people it's all about balance, you know, and sometimes when you're going through some things or or you might seem like everything's going great and then something messes up and it just ruins your whole week or day or month or year or whatever's going on, you know. But, you know, we have to realize the balance that with every good thing that comes, you know, there's going to be things that are going to have to balance that good stuff out. And, you know, last year, that was kind of what happened with me, man. Like, 
I lost my mom, you know, and so then when we went down, when we went up to Buffalo to do the whole award ceremony, you know, uh, you know, it was a bigger thing than just that, you know what I mean, for me, you know, and I wasn't able to share it with my moms, you know what I mean, so it's like, you, and I didn't let that break me, you know what I'm saying, so I was just like, she's watching me, you know what I mean, she's proud of me, you know, I just kept saying that to myself, and, you know, my wife was there encouraging me and stuff, so it's like, you have to realize, like, even though the bad things are happening, you can't let them, like, overwhelm what is really going on in your life, because there might be a lot of good things going on, but you're blind to them because you're so worried about the, the negative. So sometimes it's better just to step back and look at it and, and to kind of, like, just evaluate what's really going on, like, you know, the pros and cons, and then weigh them out, you know what I'm saying? And be grateful for what you got, even if it's not nothing, man. You know what I mean? Like, be grateful for waking up in the morning. Be grateful that you have a roof over your head if you have one. Be grateful that if, you got, if you're eating, you know, be grateful. You know what I mean? If you have family, you know, and if you st definitely still have your mom, you know, be grateful that you have her, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, that's... Lessons I always have to give to my daughter, man. She's always like, oh, we need to have a better car. We need a better house. We need, you know, and I always tell her, like, don't be, you know, focus on the things you do have. You know, a lot of people have better things or, you know, bigger things, but focus on what you do have. Right, right. You know? And I mean, for people like me, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that, you, you know, you don't come from the greatest of, of, you know, millions of dollars or anything, man. So you know what it is to, uh, be poor and to and to not have and and to want and so like yeah like you know you're raising your daughter I'm raising my daughters and my son and you know my oldest my oldest boy you know he's out of the house now doing his own thing but I still have my other boy here and my three daughters and you know it's like yeah you know I try to instill that in them and it, but it's hard for me because. Right now, it's like I be spoiling them sometimes. A lot, yeah. You know, and they get what they want because it's like I grew up not having the, none of that. You know what I mean? So it's like when we go to the store and they want something, I'm like, hell yeah, I'll grab it. You know, grab it. You know, but you better be good. I'll be trying to be mean. I'll be trying to be <laughs> firm, but still, I'll be. <laughs> yeah. I'll still be messed up, man. But that's just because, and that's another thing. Just like me, even my stuff and my wife's stuff, I get her stuff and I. I get stuff, you know, and I think the stuff yeah. is important, but it really isn't, you know what I mean? And I, I try to catch myself because I get stuff too because I never had it. So, hell yeah, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab some shiny teeth and I want to get a <laughs> shiny watch and, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't never had that, you know, I want to go get some new Nikes, you know? I yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't ever get that, so... People look at me like, oh, you're, you're too flashy. I'm like, well, man, motherfucker, I ain't never had this before, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to get it, you know what I mean? If I have it, I'm going to get it, man. And, Hell yeah. you know, my, my bills are paid. My, my my kids have food and, you know, my, my business is doing okay. And, you know, that's it. So, you know, if that's, that's what they want to hate on, you know, then they can hate me if they want, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, man. Well, shit, we appreciate you coming on, man. Where where can people check you out on social media? Oh, everywhere. Everything at Stinjati. You can punch in wherever you're at. You know, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, um, everything. iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, Amazon MP3. Uh, all that good stuff, man. And and if you just want to go check out uh, tattoo music, uh, anything with any of the people that I mess with and my crew, my producers, video mans, all that stuff, you can go to uh, tattoo music dot com. T a t t o o m u z i k dot com, and uh, that just has my bio, you know. It has everything on there, all the videos, all the links to all the music. You know, um, you can book a tattoo if you're in North Iowa. Anybody want to do North Iowa, you want to book a tattoo. That's what I do for a living. So, plus I make this 
dope music, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, yeah, we'll have to get you up here to Sioux Falls one of these times, man. Yeah, I'm down, man. You just let me know. You know what I mean? If I can make that move, I'll make that move. Yeah, I'll man. I'll rock, rock the stage with you, bro. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, shit, man. Well, thanks for coming through. Um, we're gonna we're gonna end the song or end the show here with uh, your song, my mama's song, and uh, you know, yeah, man, it's much respect it, and yeah. Appreciate it, man. It's all love. And bless us. Times a million, hundred, trillion, billion, thousand, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, man. Well, you take it easy, man. You too, brother. Thank thanks, you, man. man. Yep. Peace. Word. That was yeah. Sten Jotty on the line there. Um, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. That was uh Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, that was our episode. I think it went all right. <laughs> Not a lot of Mother's Day talking it, but yeah, yeah. But we, we made it through. Yeah, well, we're gonna end it with the Mother's Day theme. So there you go. Yeah, thank you guys for listening to us again, and we will uh, catch you guys in a couple weeks here. Thanks for listening. See ya. March fourteenth, two thousand seventeen. The world lost for Nona Jean Layers to sudden heart failure after a successful kidney transplant. Rest in peace, mama, I love you. This is my mama's song. This for you, mama. This is my mama's song. This for you, mama. Was the most everything ever She used to make every little single thing better She had the most beautiful green eyes And the smile could light up a thousand skies Yeah, this shit's true She was the strongest woman I ever met Hands down, respect She always had my back And she was the type that showed you tough love, though Those was a laughter mix with big hugs, though She did the party, she did the drugs, bro she used to sell that Oklahoma bug While she was raising this Oklahoma thug She worked hard and wasn't always there But she worked hard, so she was always there, yeah She's the one that told me, boy, life ain't no fair She also told me that no one really cares true. Except the ones that truly love you, boy Make sure you're tuning out the noise No matter what, you always have a production of the Sioux Empire.com.